Hello, this is Mr. Bus, and I'm going to walk you through how to do lab 14 on water treatment. Alright, so the equipment you're going to need for this lab, you'll obviously need um, a towel. You'll also need a water bottle with distilled water in it, a lab quest with three different sensors. You'll need a pH sensor, you'll need a turbidity sensor with a glass cuvette and you also need a conductivity probe for glassware you'll need three beakers one 400 milliliter beaker and then two 250 milliliter beakers along with a glass stir rod take a 400 milliliter beaker and fill it up with 250 milliliters of distilled water from the fresh distilled water in the room. So again here you can see 250 milliliters of water in the 400 milliliter beaker. So we're going to be using vinegar, acid, so make sure to wear goggles for this experiment. Here I keep changing my mind on this. Go ahead and add 5 milliliters of vinegar. Use the pipette. Hold the pipette and as you roll this up it's going to fill the pipette up with liquid. As you roll this down it's going to let the liquid go back out into your beaker. So go ahead and roll up and get five milliliters of vinegar and then roll back down on the pipette and add that five milliliters back to the water sample. Now you need to add 5 grams of sand to your water sample. To weigh out 5 grams of sand, go ahead and put a cup on the scale, hit 0, and then use a little scoop and just carefully add sand until you get up to 5 grams. Okay. I'm at 4.9, I'm going to call that good, and then I'm going to add the sand right to my water sample. Go ahead and stir the sand and the vinegar in the water sample for one minute to dissolve anything that wants to dissolve out of the sand. After you stirred for a minute, go ahead and pour about 200 milliliters of your water sample into another beaker. This beaker is a 250 milliliter beaker. We're going to now do our three water tests on this and we're going to basically take this and set it off to the side and allow it to settle for 10 minutes. While it's settling we're going to go ahead and test this water. I think the easiest test is doing the conductivity for the total dissolved solids. So let's do that first. Let's go ahead and change our units to milligrams per liter. We've done that in the past. Go ahead and set your toggle switch setting to the 0 to 2000 range. So on the, zero to the middle range, the 0 to 2000 range. Okay. And then let's go ahead and rinse off our conductivity probe with pure water, distilled water. And then all you have to do is simply put it in the water sample. But with this sample, every time before you take a reading, make sure to mix the water before you test it. So in this example, in the water that I'm using, in testing. The conductivity is reading at 157 milligrams per liter. I'm going to go ahead and record that in my data table. Please make sure to rinse off the conductivity probe after every time you use it. Just get in the habit of doing that with the conductivity probe and the pH probe as well. 
You can leave the conductivity probe plugged in, but now let's go ahead and use the pH probe. So go ahead and plug the pH probe in. Okay, and you know how to use this, but again, I'm just going to demonstrate really quick. Take the solution off, remove the cap, rinse out the pH meter. Okay, make sure that your solution has been mixed. That's the whole point of this. This is the untreated water. And then go ahead and take a live reading of the pH. Be very careful not to damage the pH probe because it's very breakable. All right, and then record your pH in the data table. When you're done using the pH meter, just like the conductivity probe, make sure to rinse it off carefully. Return the pH meter back to the container when it's not in use. Never, ever let the pH meter sit out. It'll dry and it won't work. It'll break. Go ahead and leave your other probes plugged in, but also now plug in your turbidity sensor and we're going to go ahead and test that. Turbidity is a sense of how cloudy the water is. To use a turbidity sensor, take a clean cuvette and fill it up with purified water up to the white line. What we're going to do now is calibrate the turbidity sensor because it has to be calibrated once it's plugged in. Okay, make sure there aren't any air bubbles on the side of the glass. Line up the arrow with the arrow on the machine. Close the cover. Okay, on our lab quest, we need to calibrate the turbidity. Don't calibrate the conductivity or the pH. Only tap on the screen where it says turbidity, hit calibrate. Hit calibrate now. Okay, enter the known value. Okay, you just put in distilled water. That's not cloudy at all. The known value for distilled water would be zero. I'm going to hit keep. I'm going to try to. There we go. Okay, it says enter known value two. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the distilled water that I just put in there, set it off to the side. I'm going to take this. I got this out of the cardboard tube that was in my turbidity sensor. Okay, this is a standard, and it says it's 100 NTU. I'm going to read that right off the bottle. I'm going to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles on it. I'm going to once again line up the triangle with the triangle, or the arrow with the arrow. Put that in my turbidity sensor. Okay, known value 2 is 100. So I'm going to type 100. Then I'm going to hit keep. Whoops. I'm going to try to do that. All right, I got it. Don't hit calibrate now, or you'll have to do everything all over again. You just calibrated it, so hit OK. OK, it's reading at 99.8 NTU, which makes sense. There's the 100 NTU sample in there, so it's reading really close to that. I'm going to take that out. My machine is now calibrated, but I haven't even used it yet. So now I have to use the machine. So I'm going to take this water. I'm going to dump it out. I'm just going to dump it on the towel here, actually. And what I need to do now is I need to fill this up with my sample. So take my untreated water sample. I'm going to stir it up because for this sample, I always stir it before I use it. I'm going to fill up my cuvette to the line. I'm going to put the cap on. I'm going to make sure that it's not wet. I'm going to dry off if it is. I'll line up the arrow with the arrow on the machine. Now I'm going to take a reading. The turbidity or cloudiness reading is a 41.4 reading. I'm going to read that live, and again, I'm going to record that on my data table for turbidity. Take your cuvette out. You can return the cloudy water back to the cloudy water sample. But then this needs to be rinsed out, so make sure to rinse it out with pure distilled water a few times so that next time you use it, it doesn't have that cloudy water still left in it.
while I was having all that fun doing the reading on the untreated water sample, my sample that I had set aside to settle has been settling. I haven't disturbed it. So what I want to do now is any particles that settle to the bottom, I want them to stay on the bottom. So I want to carefully transfer the contents of this, which has just been settling, to another very clean, make sure that you have very clean glassware, use a towel, dry stuff off, make sure there's nothing, no residue on it, no salt on it. But I'm going to carefully pour this, majority of it, not all of it, into another beaker. So this is going to be my settled water sample. So I'm not going to pour all of it because of some of the debris and uh, sand settled out. I want to leave that in there. So I'm going to pour about 100 to 150 milliliters. Okay, I'm going to leave this now. I'm going to set this off to the side. I don't need it anymore. And here is my settled water. I got about 125 milliliters. You know, you can pour about 100 to 150. Don't pour the entire 200 milliliters. That would just pour everything and you'd have to resettle it. Now I'm going to do all my three readings, my turbidity, my conductivity, and my pH on this and just repeat how to do those. You know how to use the turbidity sensor. You know how to use the pH meter. You know how to use the conductivity probe. Do all three tests on this, which is the settled water. Just a note, when you use the turbidity sensor a second time, all you need to do now is take your clean cuvette and transfer contents of your sample, your water sample to it. You will not have to calibrate it anymore. Simply take a reading because it's already been calibrated to work unless you unplugged and replugged the machine or turned it on and off. So all you have to do now is put that sample in there and now take a live, whoop, here we go, take a live reading and your turbidity sensor should be working just fine after you've calibrated it once. Remember, you can pour the contents of the cuvette back and make sure to rinse off the cuvette once again with pure distilled water so that you don't have any of the water sample in the cuvette. And let that sit out and be ready for the next sample. Okay, so now you take your settled water sample that you've already done your readings on and you're going to pour that through 10 filter papers that are coffee filters that are already nested in here. They're already set to go. Um, so just carefully pour that through and collect the sample in a very clean, I emphasis on clean, beaker, 250 milliliter beaker works fine. Um, and that will be your filtered water sample. So this had already been settled. Now it's been filtered, and so you're going to run the three tests again, conductivity, pH, and turbidity on this filtered water sample. So after you've run all three of the tests a third time on the filtered water sample, you're now going to do the last step and you're going to pH adjust it before you do your, set your test a fourth and final time. So the pH of the water sample, in my example, is about 3.39. And I need to get this to about neutral. And remember, pH of 7 is neutral. I want to raise it actually to about 7 7.5. All right, and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to carefully add small amounts of sodium bicarbonate. And so just use a very small amount at a time. Just use a little stir stick and add that. And I'm just going to very carefully, this is kind of dangerous because these pH meters are so darn sensitive, but I'm going to very carefully just kind of swirl that in. And notice I just added a very, very, very small amount. And I'm going to do that over and over and over again. Just adding very small amounts, and I'm going to monitor the pH carefully. And so the pH is going to slowly rise up to a pH of about 7. And I don't want you to rush this. If you just dump a whole bunch in at once, 
Okay, like I just put a lot in there, and I just maybe did that to see what would happen um, so that you kind of have that idea as well. The pH can rise very quickly. So again, don't add any more sodium bicarbonate or baking soda, which is acting as a buffer. We talked about what a buffer is in our soil and acid rain lab. It's kind of it's buffering it and bringing it back to a neutral pH. Don't add any more until you've already dissolved what you had previously added. So keep adding pH, uh, sodium bicarbonate slowly, carefully, a little bit at a time, and adjusting and monitoring your pH up to, like I said, up to a pH of 7. And again, just be very, very careful. The glass sphere on the end of this is extremely fragile and could certainly break very quickly if you were to hit this hard against the side of the glass. So be very careful using that as a stir mechanism. Okay, I'm going to call it good. I got my pH up to about 7.1. And so I'm going to record that in my data table for the filtered and pH adjusted water sample. And now I'm going to get my final two readings. I'm going to check my conductivity. I'm going to check my turbidity before I clean up. Mm -hmm.